Okay, I've started the recording. <clears throat> okay, I, uh, I think it's a good time to start. What do you think? I think so. I think so too. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Give me a second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is my presentation visible to everyone? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, perfect. Uh, okay, so as we all know, um, the topic for today that I'll be discussing is uh, design thinking, which is a way to solve problems. We, any, any, and as you will see for, throughout the course of this uh, presentation that uh, it can be used for solving any types of problems, not just in terms of design or in terms of computer science, but any problems in general. Uh, first of all, uh, the one thing, uh, who is this presentation for? Actually, you know what, let's not call it a presentation. Um, let's, let's call it a discussion. Uh, I would highly appreciate if uh, any participant that's there would like to contribute uh, via the chat or would like to ask any questions. So feel free to stop me anytime. Uh, this is gonna be more of a discussion. And uh, who is this talk essentially for? Uh, so anyone who is a design enthusiast or anyone who just wants to solve some problems in their life, that's it. It's, it's plain simple as that. So before we get into the talk, I would like to tell everyone a little about me. Uh, why, why should you listen to me first of all? <laughs> so essentially, I am a grad student at Stony Brook University. I am from the computer science department. And I've been at Stony Brook for about a year. And uh, I think um, I, I can call myself a design enthusiast. Uh, I've, I've been very passionate about even the bad design and the good design. And uh, as we go through uh, the presentation, uh, I am hopeful that even you will start appreciating the designs around you. Um, I am, again, as I said, a serial problem solver. I love solving problems and uh, these problems can be as small as what's supposed to be made for food to as large as what can we do about the climate change. I love to think about problems and try to come up with creative solutions. Finally, I like to believe I'm appropriately funny. I mean, if, if you end up being till the end of the presentation, I would take that as a yes. Otherwise, yeah. So naturally, the first question, the, what we're going to do today is design thinking. So the first question that comes is, what exactly is design? How do you define design? Usually when we talk about design, people start thinking something in terms of the aesthetic. How does a, how does a particular thing look? How, what are the colors that are there? What are the font that is there? When we usually think of design, we start thinking in terms of color, font. But design is way beyond and way bigger than that. Um, who better to say than Steve Jobs himself? So. Um, I have a quote from Steve Jobs here where it says that design is not just what it looks like or what it feels like, design it how it works. Every single product around you is a reason of a masterful design. And uh, we, we, not we, we don't really pay attention as much because there's a, a good design is something that just goes under the radar. We usually don't notice it. That's something of a good design. We don't pay attention to it. So yeah, the design is not just the aesthetics of it, but how exactly it works. So um, yeah. as we go forward, uh, you might start asking questions. Okay, I, I, get, I get the concept of design, I get a bit, but what exactly constitutes of a good design? So when I talk about a good design, first of all, it should be purposeful. If the design, if, if I make something that's not even useful for people, that's the biggest, like, why are you even making it, right? So that's, that's the step one. It should be very useful. Um, second would be uh, the design should be easy to learn. Uh, it should be as easy as I should not have to read a four page manual just to open a jar of jam, right? Uh, it should be very easy to learn. It should be very easy to use. Uh, it should be durable. I do not want my product to keep breaking in a day or two, right? I want it to be as durable and long lasting as possible. I mean, as consumers, don't we all like saving our money? So why wouldn't we want a product that is durable and goes for a longer time? 
and finally the one thing that we always think about is the aesthetic if if the product does not have a good aesthetic then what's the what's the whole purpose of it right so uh, remember these five points about good design and i'm going to help you i'm going to do this exercise i'm going to help you um, distinguish between a good design and a bad design let's do it all together okay so i here i have a few examples of designs so i'm going to ask you uh, to answer a few questions this is where you get involved i'm going to ask you to answer a few questions you can uh, write down the answer in the chat or you can uh, switch on your uh, audio and talk to me as well i don't mind that uh, but given that you talk uh, given that i give you the audio privilege please do not misuse it apart from that it's fine so let's let's go through this together okay i'll be asking you questions i'll i'll be asking you and i'll give you simple choices i would appreciate if you participate so let's see uh one of the main things that usually goes under the radar is a simple thing like a door we we any uh, if we try to go from one room to another we don't even think about it we open the door we just go uh but door is something that if you look closely is a master can be a masterful design or a bad design so as we all know doors are usually the two kinds of doors they are the push door and the pull door so right now right in front of us i have an example of a door when you see this door and you want to get to the other side what is what, what is your natural instinct to do um, you, you you have two options you will do a push or a pull so my question right now um, you can take part of, as, as i said in the chat i don't mind uh, what would you do that's the question i'll give you about 30 seconds what would you do you see this door instinctively what do you do do you push it or do you pull it what would you do um okay i i i see i see a lot of i see a lot of chat coming out um, a few people are saying you 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 would pull it some are saying you would push it uh just take your instincts just just imagine you want to get to the other side you you're late for a class what would you do what's the first thing you would do would you open it would you push it what would you do how would you do it okay i see a lot of pull i see some push as well uh i'll i'll give about 10 more seconds for people to decide okay there are a few push there are a few pull okay great um okay perfect uh i see the general consensus around here is to pull the door uh and and uh, some have push as well but the general consensus is to pull why do you think someone wants to pull this door i mean what's what's the compelling thing you when i when i come instinctively i just walk in and i see oh there are two handles my natural instinct is to grab the handle and i do a pull action i am always used to doing the grabbing and pulling that's that's what we've been trained to so let's actually finally see the answer well some of you got it right it was push but uh, yeah instinctively most of us uh, i know some of you might be disappointed you'd be like ah this this seemed like a pull how could it be push uh, so when a lot of when a lot of you have got it wrong you know for a fact that this is an example of a bad design i don't need to read a manual book or i don't need instructions right to tell me whether it's a push or a pull the door should be as intuitive as oh i see a door i know exactly what needs to be done there should not even the fact that there is a question between some people saying push and some people saying pull that itself suggests that this is a bad design a good design everyone knows what exactly needs to be done no one has a question that oh is this a push or is a pull or no 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 Uh, i hope this this is clear so this is an example of bad design and i hope after this doc after this talk uh, all around you you will start seeing and appreciating doors and <laughs> try to actually find out which ones are good design and bad design so uh, you'd say okay sir all um, that's great can can you tell me some examples of a good design okay i i'll surely do that so most of us at least most of us uh in our childhood have played this game mario i believe all of us have played this game at least once or heard about this game uh and if you if if you've not heard about this game and you're living under a rock uh 
so probably probably you've uh, never heard any uh, so I, I, if if i had to put what mario is mario is like the holy grail of gaming that's how games started so this is the opening level of mario uh, as you can see uh, there is a small tiny character towards the left his name is mario and your okay i'm not going to tell you what what your goal is just just uh, say for example you've been given the screen and you uh, i tell you the controls the controls are either going left going right going up or going down now my question to you is what's your natural instinct to do would you go left would you go right would you go top or would you go down just see, just judging by what you see right now what, what, what's your natural instinct okay i see a lot of people writing right okay okay right okay i'll give about 10 more seconds for people oh right and jump <laughs> you know the game <laughs> benjamin knows the game <laughs> so yeah right okay great um okay I, i believe i have a i have a consensus here but do you see the fact that for this there was no question no doubt everyone unanimously said you need to go to right here's your character and the first thing that you do in the game is go right how do i know this exactly well i am used to being an egocentric person i am used to always seeing myself at the center of the screen my character is suddenly towards the left it's an offset towards the left it's a natural calling for me to take it towards right i mean uh, i do not have to did you use any tutorial did i give any of you any hint no all of you unanimously said that you should go right well let's actually see how it works so here's the clip of the game and the first thing you do is go right of course as benji said you have to do jumps as well but the <laughs> other but the point of the topic today is that i didn't have to give you any manual i didn't give you any manual i and just like that you know exactly what you need to do in the game you have to go towards the right your goal is probably towards the right and not towards the left and just like that you can play this game this is a classic example of a good design i don't have to teach anyone it's unanimous everyone knows what exactly needs to be done there is no question of whether it's a pull or a pull or uh, whether it's a pull or a push um yeah so i'll take one uh, one more similar example of a good design uh, in in an everyday life we do see this uh, whenever the light goes off uh, we always uh, i mean nowadays we have our smartphones that have flashlights but if suppose we can't find our if we can't find our smartphone or the battery is running out we always run for the flashlight right and uh, why is flashlight such a good design because there is literally just one thing that you have to do press the button as soon as you press the button you get light as soon as you press the button the light goes off no questions asked you know exactly what needs to be done flashlights are durable also i mean if you throw it it still i don't 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 actually start throwing your flashlight but you know for a fact that it's going to endure a bit of strain so it's durable um, it's 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 a classic example of a good design okay uh, so after this your you, everyone might start think okay now i get a hang of what a good design is i, I think i can start spotting good designs around me uh, but saral what exactly is design thinking you haven't talked about it okay now how do i as a person start solving my problem like a designer so for that first you need to start thinking like a designer how do i think like a designer uh, the first thing that you do to think like a designer is start observing the world around you whenever you start observe and when i say observing i don't just mean just glancing over it actually start looking and ask asking interesting questions like oh every time i see a person tries to open this door they end up messing it up why are they messing it up I start asking interesting question why why is someone struggling with that jar that that jam jar why are they still not open be able to open it so first step is to ask interesting questions you need to observe the world around you start asking interesting questions and then you start using creative thinking to solve your problem okay uh, okay i know what design thinking is in theory how do i actually do it so i'm going to give you the tools i'm going to teach you step by step how to use design thinking to solve any damn problem in the world okay so uh, let's just see what are the steps there's always just these four simple steps for design thinking 
always remember any problem if you apply these four steps you're going to able to solve any damn problem that's there uh, what are these steps i'm going to deep dive into each step so right now i'm just going to give you an overview um, the first step is observe you need to start observing the world around you uh, the next phase is ideation ideation is you essentially start creatively thinking about the problem um, third step is the prototyping where you actually start developing a kind of solution and the fourth step is test where you actually test out your solutions okay so now that you know now that you have all these uh, steps can you sarul can you help me out solve my problem can you help me solve out my math problem sure i can do that no problem we're going to do that just uh, so first i'm going to do is uh, deep dive into each uh, each uh, phases i'm going to explain what exactly needs to be done in these phases and then we can actually start taking problems and try start solving those problems uh like i said the first step is to observe uh you should and again as i said before when i say observe you don't have to just glance around the things okay i have a bottle around me okay i have my mobile i have i have a lot of things around me what what now no when i say observe you need to actually observe and ask interesting questions uh, asking questions like okay why is someone struggling with this why why does this work this way why is that why why is that jam jar still so hard i i i know i'm a bit salty about the jam jar because i just tried opening it today and i wasn't able to so that i was like okay i'm going to use it in my talk definitely something of a bad design but yeah so uh, why is that jam jar so hard to open i mean it's it's just a jam jar i want my jar i, I just want my jam why should it be such a problem so you need to start observing the world around you and ask important questions the next step is the ideation phase start imagining solutions and when i say start imagining solutions you these solutions can be as bizarre and as wild as possible and as feasible as possible and the spectrum is yours you can imagine all kinds of solution possible okay so the jam jar let's take the jam jar example why am i not able to open it what could be the solution um could i de design the jar in a different way that does not require me to move it uh, do i design an opener in the jar or do i provide someone with an opener i there are many many things that can come out or you know what best give me the give me the damn uh, jam in the damn jam in uh, maybe a box i just have to open the box i can use it and i'm done so as you can see i i i'm just imagining wild solutions possible you can you need you can imagine as many solutions as possible and then what you do is you shortlist them you actually start figuring out okay although i have selected all these wild solutions let's see which one is feasible and which one is possible that comes in the prototype okay i see i see that the jam jar is okay i see the problem i i i thought of so many solutions let's see if there's some feasible solution okay the feasible solution is probably uh, make the lid a little less tighter okay so that's that's how i i i start implementing my idea i make a prototype can i make a prototype yes i can uh, say for example why can't i do it just like a water bottle i would simply open the tap uh, i would simply open the cap no no hard pressing and all and bam i'm done with my jam so that there there going to be a lot of jam puns when you attend this talk yeah <laughs> so uh, again you design the prototype develop a very simple model and try to finally test it when i say test it just see does it work is it is it actually working does it solve your problem if it solves your problem done and well you're good you're good to go and just like that just by so following these four simple steps i could i could solve my problem just by these four simple steps of observe ideation prototype and test i could solve any damn problem that i want uh you will be like okay sir enough with the jam can you actually show this work yes i'm going to i'm going to take the best the best way to understand anything is take some examples uh i'm going to use the the ipad problem as uh, one of my friend had uh, one of my friend had suggested me that it's a, it's a very good problem to tackle uh i i i hope that you uh, i hope that everyone knows what an ipad is and if you don't know what an ipad is just take your phone and enlarge it that's what an ipad is but uh, yeah so what's the problem what's the solution we're going to tackle everything all together so the ipad problem um so this is what the ipad looks like it's it's a big device 
usually you require two hands to fit it in your uh, to actually hold it and use it and uh, it can be used for a lot of things people use it for graphic designing people use it for uh, uh, emails people also use it for watching netflix people watch it people use it for watching their looking at their cat photos you can do whatever you want it's it's essentially a tablet that people use so you would be like okay saral i know what an ipad is but what's the problem with the ipad well again as we all know given all the generations of the ipad the ipad the only thing that's happening is ipads are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and to to an extent where i can't even reach from end to end right I, again of course this this example here is uh, it's it's an exaggeration it's not the actual ipad but you get you get what i'm saying seasonal users of ipad know that okay reaching from one end to another end is like a task for me i need to like literally swipe so much i need to touch here this that so now that apple starts seeing this they ask interesting questions now again uh, we're going to follow our four steps the first step is observe i observe that there is a problem people are getting stuck they cannot use their ipad from one end to another because it's just too big for them okay i i see the problem let's use ideation what could be the idea uh well the first idea could be just don't make it that big make it small make it compact but then it defeats the purpose right so can we think of a different idea and just like that apple came up with a brilliant solution just use an apple pencil just just make a pencil as uh, this, the solution was as simple as get a stylus solve the problem and you're done I, i and i can just use it like a notebook i have a big ipad i have a pen around i can just literally write down whatever i want and i'm done wow problem solved but but think again is the problem solved sometimes when we see that oh great the apple pencil is working the the ipad is working everything works for me sometimes when you solve a problem you end up creating another problem well if if a lot if if a lot of you know the apple pencil essentially to charge it you had to put it into the ipad again and it looks something like this the image to your left is an if 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 by looking at this you think of a lollipop yeah it looked like a lollipop the, the the image on the right exactly shows why and this was a problem for many users how how do you attach a pen like this and keep walking around the pen would slip down or how do you have hold it with the pen do i start eating it i don't know so people were getting confused with this bad design so although i was able to solve one problem i ended up getting another problem so you'll be like okay sir so design thinking failed us didn't it not really the problem is i didn't teach you design thinking properly there was still one aspect that i didn't teach you and this aspect is the critical aspect um, i would honestly appreciate if you pay the most attention to this aspect yeah 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 you got a problem you do an observe you do an ideation you do a prototype you do a test great but what what's that one thing that's left the one thing that's left is to repeat that all over again essentially to make it an iteration not all your products we assume that my test is always going to work what if my test does not work what if my prototype fails what if my idea fails i need to go back to the drawing board i need to again observe again ideate again prototype again test and i have to do this cycle on and on and on until i am able to solve my problem in apple's case they saw this problem they again went back to the drawing board did the iteration and came up with something called as the apple pencil second generation if you notice the first generation as you can see the problem was the charging right oh i i see there is someone in the chat yeah uh as as you see uh the the apple pencil in the first generation had the problem of charging right it solved the other problems right all all our other problems were solved by the apple pencil right uh it could it could write and do on large screens no problem but the problem was charging so what apple came up with was how about we remove the whole charging when you connected with an ipad let's let's come up with something new and what they came up with was a wireless charging apple pencil it just connects magnetically to your ipad it gets the job done it charges the ipad and you're all set there is no connecting there is no idea of it falling down as long as you just put it up it sets up it looks aesthetically amazing i mean 
don't you see the difference what exactly is this and then you look at this this looks ex aesthetically pleasing it's durable it gets the job done easy to use i do not have to think where i have to insert i have to just put it up and done and just like that i solved my problem and that's how apple solves its problem it just uses design thinking to solve its problem but now that you know design thinking you will know for a fact that this problem is not yet solved maybe there are more things that can be done so i mean i'm not going to look deep dive into this in this presentation but it's something that you can do at home probably try figuring out are there more things that i can improve on the apple pencil gen 2 give the idea to apple and if apple likes it who who knows maybe they might start uh, maybe they offer you a job and uh, they might start uh, paying you for it but yeah so keep thinking keep 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 observing around you keep ideating make a prototype and test it out your design might not be right the first time but remember it is an iterative process you need to go again and again and again through the loop and finally you'll hit the bullseye let's take one more example uh, just a quick example um, as as you all so this is again by now you would have realized i'm an avid gamer so i whenever i think of an iterative design i always come across the controller of the playstation so how exactly does it work was the first generation was well a simple playstation uh, towards your left corner you see it's just a simple controller it's got the up down left right you can play your mario no problem but then people realized sometimes just going up down left right does not give me the accurate precision so the second generation controller they came out with something called as the joysticks the sticks that keep moving so there are 360 stick i can do exact precision that i want that works okay in 1997 they came up with that great 2000 they copied the same design great but then people started realizing okay now that games are so popular i play so many games i don't want to keep sitting in front of my desktop and looking at it and uh, make a mess of my eyesight maybe i want something that i can sit back on my couch and enjoy so then they came up with a design which was wireless essentially eliminating the wire and then i can sit back and enjoy my gaming no problems at all okay that was another iteration uh, can they perfect it even better so when they came up with the design for ps4 as you can see in 2013 they realized okay maybe i want a touch screen nowadays everything has a touch screen can we add a touch screen to the controller and there what that's where they did it so ps4 again added something new keep going on and on like a designer and finally now in the news it's been out in the news that playstation 5 is about to come and when you see uh, they realized that while the controller had all the functionality there were some aesthetics that were missing or some uh, good feel to good aspect was missing so in to, in 2000 in 2020 they came up with the newest controller which is supposed to look like this and it it's supposed to be very uh, ergonomically good for people with big hands as well as small hands so they solved another problem with that again good design thinkers will know that this is not the final design maybe later they might come think, come with something even better so uh, always remember that the final step of design thinking is the iteration no one talks about that step but that's the important step of design thinking again i'll just do a quick overview you you need to observe you need to ideate you need to make a prototype and you need to test it but don't forget to repeat the process always remember it's an iteration keep going on and on till you perfect the product uh, the reason that so many products around us are so good is because of the iteration and not just the initial idea the first idea never clicks it's always the second the third the fourth and how you keep going on and on and on and just exactly like that you solve all your problems so using design thinking you can essentially solve any damn problem that you are facing um with that uh, i think i'll end my presentation uh thank you and i i believe after this talk the first thing you would do is keep continuing the conversation about design start noticing the small design around you small elements that maybe are good design maybe are bad design but start appreciating them and uh, if if you if you have appreciation for design and you'd like to contact me that's my email i am always free to talk about good designs bad designs and design thinking uh, i can also help you apply design thinking to your problems and uh,
but don't don't expect me to be your therapist just don't i'm just going to help you with the problems i can so yeah with that i'd like to end my talk thank you for attending and again it's open for questions if anyone has any questions if if you have any examples where you'd like to see me apply design thinking i can help you out with that as well so yeah with that i'd like to end okay i i don't know if there are any questions or not are is are there any questions okay i i don't see any questions okay uh, is the apple mouse a good design uh well if if you know if you if you know about the apple mouse uh, well it it started uh back in 1980s i believe and uh, it is it wasn't the the magic mouse when you imagine the magic mouse it was not looking like the magic mouse anywhere remotely close like we see the magic mouse right now and we are like wow it it looks beautiful it works but no there were many iterations that need to be done uh the mouse essentially before was 750 dollars can you imagine today i if i pay more than 40 50 dollars for a mouse i might i might not buy it but can you imagine back in the day they had to pay 750 dollars for a mouse so then they decided okay can we improve on it can we have a better design they came up with the mouse ball roll on design and then they came up with different designs so even now i believe the apple mouse is not perfect as some of you might know i mean i'll i'll try to show if it's possible the apple mouse still has a problem uh the mouse the mouse charging has a problem uh again I, by the end of this talk you will realize that apple has problem with their charging but yeah just give me a second i'll i'll show you yeah share screen yeah as you can see uh the charging for the apple mouse while the apple mouse looks amazing the charging for the apple mouse is actually at the bottom so if i connect the charger essentially i can't use the mouse but i want to use the mouse but i can't use it while charging do you see the problem so again maybe this is a bad design maybe they did it intentionally they didn't want people to use it while charging but uh, only time will tell if maybe they release apple mouse gen 2 and maybe that has a wireless charging or i don't know might come up with something different so this all depends on us we can start asking interesting questions and start solving uh, these problems uh, thank you for the question uh, naman uh, any other question anyone would like to ask any questions i i am open for feedback as well if anyone wants to give me feedback they're like ah i didn't like this aspect i i don't understand it you can go for it you can tell me okay with with no reply i assume that it was a wonderful talk everyone understood everything very clearly and there was no aspect that they didn't understand so thanks a lot yeah benji awesome thank thank you uh, first i want to say thank you so much again the talk was really it made sense like design isn't design i don't think is taught as much as it, as it has been or i guess as it could be in some cases in like the undergrad courses Yeah. But like this really this really summed it up nicely for at least for me for from an abstract view. Uh, I mean yeah, when you deep when you deep dive into good product design or any kind of good design, uh this is just a very high level overview. But this is a place where I want you to start thinking about design. Uh take this talk more of as a starting point where you where you start looking at things around you and start appreciating good or bad design. Uh if you if you want to deep dive into it of course uh, you can ask uh, you can uh, talk to me on my email and we can talk more about it yeah uh okay, I, i believe benji we we do not have any questions and i think we can end with a closing remark Hey, so for everyone, thank you so much for coming again, and then thank you for thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be to give us this talk. I um, yeah. For everyone else, that for everyone else who's still hacking, uh, submissions are due by five p.m. on Dev Post. All the all the announcements are in the event announcements channel on Discord. 
Um, as always, uh, tag, like always at the mentor tag if you need help or if any tag in the